Hey guys, I'm Debbie. This is Deb on the Web. Welcome to our little corner of the internet where we talk about bizarre, interesting, educational, fun, creepy things that we find on the internet. I would urge you all to do your own research. Nothing you see here or anywhere else should be classified as absolute truth without doing that yourself. You never know what you'll find out if you dig into those rabbit holes, though. So without further ado, this is for entertainment purposes only. Let's see what internet magic we have for today. I'm never going to get tired of it. Like MK Ultra is not something that everyone knows about, and I think if you live in the U.S., you should just you should have like a an overview. I'm gonna censor myself for certain words because I think well, you know, MK Ultra was the code name for an illegal human experimentation program run by the CIA from the 50s to the 70s, so it ran for 20 years in the United States of America. And it really is one of those truth is stranger than fiction stories because it sounds like it's made up, but it's not. They recruited scientists from Germany that got in a lot of trouble for things they did during World War II in Germany. They were war criminals and they were brought over to the US to help with these experiments. Basically the goal of this entire thing was to learn how to control other people's minds. Some of their methodologies were brainwashing, torture, abuse, isolation, sensory deprivation, hypnosis, drugs. Their favorite drug was LSD. Fun fact about LSD, it was actually brought over to the US for this program and accidentally created the entire LSD counterculture of the 60s. The stuff they did was so messed up that in 1973, when the program ended, the director of the CIA, Richard Helms, ordered that all documents about this project be destroyed. And so what we actually know today about what went on then is just a small percentage of what actually went on. We've had to rely on the little bit of documents that remained and uh, the, you know, sworn testimonies of participants. Journalist Stephen Kinzer has written that this was essentially just a continuation of the work that they started in those camps. Some of the subjects of MKUltra were volunteers. A lot of them weren't. But even people that volunteered sometimes didn't really know what they were volunteering for. So for example, Whitey Bulger, the Boston mobster, was in prison at the time. This was an earlier, this was earlier in his life. And he was told that they were researching a cure for schizophrenia. What they were actually researching was to see what the long-term effects of drugging someone with LSD for days on end would do. So they gave him LSD every day for over a year. He wrote that it was horrific, that he felt like he was going insane. And that was kind of the purpose. The goal of this was to, step one, erase people's minds, take away their identity, their individuality, and step number two was to reprogram it, to be able to control them, get, the, get you to do what they wanted. Stephen Kinzer wrote that they were pretty successful at the first step, not so much at the second step. But yeah, people suffered permanent damage because of this. Patients would forget who they were, what their memories were, who their parents were, they thought their doctors were their parents, it was a mess. We have a podcast episode about this. Let me know if you want to hear more on here, though. I mean, I have my serious doubts that if all of this was going on, which it's up to you to decide what you think. Uh, I think you probably know what I think. Uh, I also would assume that this never stopped. There's got to be something going on deep down. And I also firmly believe that no information that we have access to is there accidentally or because somebody slipped up. I think that we are given the information that they, they want us to have to come to the conclusions that they want us to come to for whatever that reason may be. It's my two stance. There's something else for you.
I mean, there's no doubt that it's pretty creepy. Uh, whether I, I know there are, there have been rumors for years about Charlie Manson and his involvement or being some sort of CIA plant or obviously MK Ultra is a thing. So, or possibly, allegedly. So, but as far as them, the video stating this was the effects of MK Ultra, I would say maybe, but maybe that's what they want you to think. LeBron, I get it. You want to win a game, but what's all this about? A little fishy if you ask me. Make sure to hit that follow button because tomorrow's video is crazy. I would say those are highly suspicious motions to do and the odds of it being at random are, I don't know. Uh, feel free to go back and pause and read, you know, more of what, what the information was there. But, and let me know what you think down in the comments below. Uh, get to introduce into the record page 50, 55 from the committee's interview with FBI employees. Have some administrative matters first. I wanted to introduce into the record page 50, 55 from the committee's interview with FBI employee Roya Demlo, who you. So I wanted to introduce into the record page 50, 55 from the committee's interview with page 50, 55 from the committee's interview with, which took place on July 17, 2023. Uh, in that which took place on July 17, 2023. Uh, in that, we're to leave this interview and we're to suggest or imply that when you said the laptop was real, that it meant that the FBI had affirmatively determined in October 2020 that the laptop belonged to Hunter Biden. We're to leave this interview and we're to suggest or imply that when you said the laptop was real, that it meant that the FBI had affirmatively determined in October 2020 that the laptop belonged to Hunter Biden. Well, I think we can at least all agree that was a little odd. In a different setting, I would probably assume she was on some serious drugs, but... Yeah, I have no idea what to make of that other than. Just into the record, page 55. Nope, sorry about that. Yet. Out of the ordinary for Lisa Luviano's daughter to come home from school with something to show. On September 24th, it was this sticker with a starry night-like design. She said, it's a sleeping sticker. And um, I asked her, where do you get this? She's like, well, my teacher gives it to me for a sleeping time. Luviano says her daughter then claimed other classmates get it too. The next day we went up to the school, we bought the evidence up there. We filed a report. We did say we wanted to file criminal charges if this is something that's true. The expectation was the school would notify other parents, but nearly two weeks went by and Luviano grew increasingly concerned. She decided to loop them in on her own by sending a mass text. When Najla Abdullah got it, she began to question her four-year-old, asking him if he ever got, quote, a special sticker. He said, yes, mommy, I get a special sticker. I said, what does the sticker look like? He said, I get it right here on my hand and it has the storms with the clouds and the stars and the moon. I do not have children, but I put this in here. Everyone needs to see this. And all I can say, it is not the time to sleep on the role of parent. Uh, I know life is busy and I know there's so much going on, but your kids need more attention than ever. It's just, it's wild to think of what's going on out there.
This pilot unexpectedly adopted a kitten in the middle of a flight while he was in the process of rescuing nearly 150 other animals. Southwest Airlines pilot Matthew Prebish says that he's always considered himself more of a dog person, but when he met this kitten, she just caught his heart. Teaming up with Greater Good Charities and Lucky Dog Animal Rescue, Captain Matt volunteered to help empty the shelters in areas affected by Hurricanes Helene and Milton by flying existing shelter residents to other rescues around the country, creating space at those affected shelters for all the newly displaced pets that were lost when the hurricanes hit. After landing in Milwaukee, weather delays gave Matt the time to mingle with his four-legged passengers, and that's when he spotted Avery pressed up against the side of her crate. She kept meowing at him as if she were trying to get his attention, and once he held her, he just knew that they were a match. Though he hadn't planned on adopting, Matt called his wife to discuss it. She immediately approved, saying that she kind of knew all along that he'd probably be coming home with a new family member. Avery has been settling into her new home perfectly, and the rest of the 95 cats and 52 dogs from the flight will soon be going to their forever homes too. I'm Jen, and I post something positive every day. I just like to end each of these compilations on a positive note. Uh, there's a lot of dark stuff, and especially if you're just getting into research. Uh, it, it can be dark, so it's important to remember that there are amazing things going on in this world too. Shout out to everybody involved in that video. The pilot, the good news girl from TikTok, uh, pilot's wife, and all the rescues that that are working together to help all of the displaced animals down south and who do it every time and every day. So thank you to all in that game. It is It is a hard one. So with that being said, I hope everyone has a beautiful night and feel free to like, subscribe, come back tomorrow. I will be here Monday through Friday, every night. Have a good one. Oh, and good night, Grandma. I love you.